All right, everyone, we start off today talking about a major loss taken by a legacy media network. Of course, the New York Times is being ordered to hand back copies of, uh, of privileged communications between attorney and client that they managed to obtain under suspicious circumstances, I will add. Nobody's reporting on that part of it for the most part. Uh, to Project Veritas. Veritas is suing them for defamation. The New York Times managed to get uh, communications between Veritas and its lawyer, I, th I think James O'Keefe and his lawyer specifically, um, and, and reported on them. The problem is, of course, that's privileged communication. Generally speaking, uh, is not something that you report on because that is, is pertinent to legal guidelines that are different from other communications. It's not two people privately talking about some random thing, some third party gets a hold of it and puts it on the internet. Um, it's more protected than that because it involves specifically attorney-client privilege. Um, that's that's uh, <laughs> relatively important legally. Uh, the New York Times is being sued by Veritas for defamation over the Ashley Biden uh, diary incident. We'll get into that a little bit. Uh, but now they've been ordered by a judge to hand back all the communications, destroy any electronic copies, and take down their story uh, that they posted initially, which is a stink piece about... Uh, Project Veritas, and I found it hilarious. The New York Times and all of the other legacy media, the other yellow journalists in name only, out there all dogpiled Project Veritas when the real story, which should be one of the biggest modern political scandals, is that you have Joe Biden's daughter, the sitting president's daughter, in a diary that was apparently stolen, but there's no evidence that Veritas was involved, so they got raided in vain. That's the other major scandal, is the attempt at political suppression and oppression there on Project Veritas. It's, po it's purely politics. Um, the sitting president uh, was doing inappropriate things with his own daughter, allegedly, according to this diary, when it was first put out there, in, in part, in chunks. Uh, it wasn't even by Veritas. Uh, it couldn't be verified by Veritas. And what ended up happening is, of course, people had to say, well, you know, there's no verification that this entry is even real. We don't even know that the diary exists. When you get raided by the FBI pertinent to that diary being stolen, though, you've just proven that it existed. This was actually written. It's been verified. Ashley Biden is claiming not, not being touched by daddy or something like that, but claiming he was taking inappropriate showers with her. He felt that that was inappropriate. It's not quite clear exactly what age she was at the time. Um, <laughs> that, that's probably newsworthy. If this had happened with Trump's daughter, if Ivanka had written this down and someone got a hold of the diary, the legacy media would not fixate on the fact that the diary was stolen. They would fixate on the fact that this proves that Trump is a pervert. We need to throw him out of office. You know it. I know it. Even the liberals know it. The legacy media certainly knows it. Now, <clears throat> first and foremost, before I get further into this, because it, I mean, Again, there's, it's a multifaceted, multi-layered political scandal here, and this is just the icing on the cake here with regards to the legacy media's own legal culpability. Now, this indicates to me the New York Times probably losing the defamation case. So enjoy, James. Uh, enjoy a seven-figure settlement probably um, from one of your you know, non-journalistic competitors. So congratulations to you. You're doing you know, the Lord's work, whatever Lord that happens to be that you believe in. Anyway. I'll pin uh, on this video, instead of pinning like normally um, the other sites that I host on, I'm going to post all of Project Veritas's links. So they'll be in the description, and I'll also pin them down below if you're watching this video on YouTube. Now, five different links. They're YouTube, they're BitChute, they're Odyssey, they're Rumble, and they're Minds. Because this is actual journalism. This is what James O'Keefe does. Uh, is, this is what Andy No does. This is what Tim Pool does. This is what many other people do. Now you'll notice a common factor in people that do actual journalism that so-called journalists that don't do journalism don't have to suffer with. Getting dogpiled constantly, not just by the legacy media, which has become an oligarchy. They all rinse one another's hands. They're not really competitors anymore. They basically peddle the same state propaganda and corporate propaganda anyway. They get it from central sources that happen to invest in them, invest time, effort, and power into them, etc. Biden, for example, right now, <clears throat> is explicitly attempting to use elements of the legacy media. This was admitted to by Oliver Darcy like two weeks ago. He's from CNN, a producer there, I believe. 
um, openly attempting to coerce the corporate press into spinning economic news to convince the American people the economy's not shit right now. Well, <laughs> clearly that's not journalistic. That's taking marching orders from the administration. Even some pseudo journos from the Missing Link me uh, media groups, even they were calling it out, probably because they didn't get the memo. Like, well, shit, Biden's partnering with CNN and MSNBC. Why is he not partnering with uh, Vox or something? <laughs> it's very, very funny to see. Uh, there's a little bit of bad blood, I think, beginning to emerge there. There's a crack that's beginning to show between the, the corporatized-ish Missing Link media and the actual legacy media because the latter has the billionaire backers and the former is, is smaller. They're still rich and they're still propagandistic ideologues, but they're not necessarily quite in the know as much. And I think they're beginning to feel a little bit jealous about this fact because many of them have done better than the legacy media. Um, so I'm gonna put those links uh, down below in a pinned comment to Project Veritas things. You should follow them cross-platform because it's actual journalism. They get dogpiled fucking constantly. Whenever you see someone that gets demoted and dogpiled and people say horrible shit about them, and it's not a funny meme, it's not let's go Brandon or something, it's claims of illegal activity and getting raided by the feds and stuff like that, it always seems it's because they're actually doing their job. Actual journalism, actual independent analysis, etc., 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 which is why it's not going to happen to the New York Times. Now, they obtained privileged information, illegally posted it. Now they're all, all salty about it. They're like, whoa, we legally obtained this. This is unprecedented. The judiciary is trying to stop the press. It's not an activity of the press. <laughs> You're getting sued for defamation for a reason because the analysis derived from the whole case doesn't even make sense. We have a much bigger political scandal. We, we have a twofold scandal here that involves the establishment powers that be. Technically threefold at this point, uh, but this is like, like the most minor layer. The first layer is that at least you have an allegation by the daughter of the sitting president that he engaged in inappropriate behaviors of a potentially sexually nature, uh, sexual nature with her. This isn't proof of a crime. It's not an allegation of rape or anything like that. It's like a level one on the Me Too scale, but it is an allegation I would think the average person would consider to be more credible based on who it came from and the situation in which it takes form. If you're writing a diary, that diary usually is considered to be private. Normally you're not showing it to people, not even your friends, is kind of the point. You don't make that kind of allegation in the form that it's never going to be publicly released in and just spin a bunch of fantasies. That, that's the general gist of it. She did not intend for this to ever be read uh, by another living human being, presumably. At least not until it's posthumous. Sometimes people's diaries, like, uh, they, they get published after they die. Uh, in, in this case, though, she's not dead. And she's making this allegation uh, that she was showering naked with her dad, Joe Biden, felt it to be inappropriate, felt uncomfortable with it. Um, this was never spoken of by any legacy media outlet. It was barely touched on by most of the Missing Link media. You heard it from me, you heard it from a few others that make content uh, of an independent nature, but you didn't hear, you didn't, I don't even think you heard about it on Fox. Did Tucker Carlson even want to talk about that one? Now, at first, not really a scandal. You, you've got an allegation of an allegation, because we didn't even know that this material was real. It wasn't coming, by the way, from Veritas at all. That's part of, I believe, part of the defamation case. They're not the ones, they didn't go raid her home and steal her diary. That's ludicrous. No, it got taken by other groups and then apparently one of them said, hey, it's kind of juicy. I'm putting this on the internet. Probably getting myself into federal prison for 20 years, but hey, <laughs> it'll be worth the lulls. The New York Times effectively retaliated and knew almost instantaneously, and this is the other side of the political scandal. This goes beyond the diary's contents. How did the New York Times know almost instantaneously about this raid? How did they, in, in the scope of, I think, not much more than an hour, not only know about it, get on scene to collect details, but then write a bunch of shit about it? How did they know? It's because they knew that the raid was going to happen beforehand. They had insider knowledge. The other side of the scandal is that somebody, at least, call it a rogue agent, don't even get conspiratorial. It was just a politically motivated, low-level poop-butt janitor 
Somebody at the FBI let the New York Times know that this was going to happen. It was sort of like when CNN was waiting there um, at the exact moment that I think it was Papadopoulos was raided. Was it Papadopoulos or was it one of the others? I don't know, Giuliani got raided, Roger Stone, a bunch of other people getting, again, attacked for political reasons by an out-of-control government which is wielding bureaucrats like the FBI, certainly the IRS won't be long from now, um, like a cudgel against people for political reasons. Why do you think that Biden is so massively fixated on expanding the IRS right now? It's not to go after billionaire tax cheats. They all donated to him. It's to go after you and me. <laughs> That's why. Why do you think he wants more power for uh, all of the departments in, the, in uh, government? Why do you think he wants to massively expand OSHA's power? All of these groups, fundamentally, he can use as a weapon. And he will. There will be differential enforcement, by the way, if SCOTUS doesn't scuttle it permanently with the OSHA mandate. Your business with 100 employees, we're not going to fine you, or we'll fine you the minimum or something like that, because you donated to the right people. You have the right ideas. He, this dude over here, now we're going to throw the book at him. We're going to force him to litigate it in court, too, so he pays 10 times as much. That's what's going to happen. Garen fucking T. So, yeah, it's good that the New York Times is being commanded by this court to remove the article and return this you know, privileged material. Um, I would like to see the New York Times be further compelled to actually report on the contents of the diary we now know is real. It's a major potential political scandal. What they'll say is, well, there's no evidence of this, so we don't need to investigate it. That's how you find evidence. See, that's the difference between James O'Keefe or, or an Andy No or someone like that. They go and they attempt to find corroboration if they think that something might be there. This is considered to be yellow journalism, but actually, it's quite the opposite. If you look at that particular era, we're talking the progressive era and the Gilded Age, basically, one of the main propaganda tactics was to shut out a news story, to not report on it. Not to, not to report bad things about the dude who's opposing the dude you don't like. You might not have anything but fabricated material to go on. No, simply neglect to talk about any major news that happens to be inconvenient for them. Muckraking, yellow journalism, the gadfly media. That's about all. Peace out.